Today we're creating low poly art based off of a photograph. This is an intermediate level tutorial and I've commissioned UKR Art Design to create this artwork. He did an excellent job. You can learn more about him in the description of this video. Um, also, I've released this under a public domain license so you can download the source file and modify it uh, or follow along, use it for learning. The first thing we're going to do is open up layers and we're going to add a layer. So we've imported this image already in. Go ahead and click Add. And now we'll have two layers. And we want to put the image on the first layer. So right click and go Move to Layer. And we'll just move this image to Layer 1. And that's going to keep it so that we don't accidentally select this, this image while we're trying to trace it. Then we're going to turn the opacity down. Turn it down maybe half or to where, where you think is good. And then we'll go to Layer 2 and go into the Path tool. Um, if you're not familiar with the path tool, we just left click and it creates these nodes. And by default, the nodes should snap to each other. But if they don't, the settings to do that is over on the right hand side, you can toggle how the nodes interact with each other, all kinds of great settings there. Um, just hover over them to see how, how they're toggled right now. But what you're going to do is just create uh, some different triangles, maybe do anywhere from three to five um, nodes per path. And then all the paths should be connected to each other. You don't want to have any, any gaps between these paths. I'm just going to speed up the video here because this is a very repetitive process. And there's really no right or wrong way to do this. Uh, in areas of the image that have higher detail, you may want to do more uh, smaller paths, smaller triangles. And when there's not a whole lot of detail, you can do larger triangles. Um, but really just experiment with it and play with it. You see the hair here, um, some of the pads are kind of following the parts where the hair are to make it look more realistic. It helps if you have a nice a higher resolution image like this as well so that you can zoom in and kind of see the detail. We're not doing any coloring right now. We're just going to uh, create these, these outlines of all these different, um, I guess, poly shapes. Uh, and then we'll do coloring uh, to fill in with a color. We'll sh I'll show you how to do that in a minute. Here on the glasses where there's more detail, notice it's kind of following the line of the glasses. So it's not just arbitrary shapes that you're drawing. You do kind of want to map it to the outline, like the outline of the ear here, and different shadows, like different hard outlines like the glasses here. It's good to kind of follow a path along that um, rather than just going over because all these shapes are going to have a solid color within them. We're not using gradients or anything. On the teeth, it's a good idea to not have too much detail either or not have a lot of different shapes within the teeth. Finishing up here on the shirt, notice there's just lots of larger triangles and larger shapes because there's not the detail on the shirt is not as important. Now we'll go into layer one and we can turn this opacity back up because we want to get a true color. And we're going to select the path tool and you can hover over and it sort of outlines the shape left click on it and now select the color picker tool and we can choose an area within here kind of an average area that you want and just click that and we're going to toggle between the path tool and the color picker tool it's f2 is the shortcut and f7 the shortcuts to get into those and so you'll hit f2 select the shape then F7 to pick the color. And when you left click in there, it'll just pick that average color. Sometimes it may be lighter than you think, sometimes darker, but don't worry about it too much right now. After the image is all done, we'll come back in here to adjust the colors. You could also choose a color from the color bar at the bottom, or you could go into fill and stroke and choose a color. But it's a good idea to use that color picker because you get an accurate average color of whatever colors are within the path that you've drawn. I'm obviously speeding up the video here. I believe this is a 20x speed. This total drawing was a two hour uh, total project just to draw. And so it does take a little bit of time. Like I said, it's fairly repetitive. You'll notice too, it's gonna be hard here. Sometimes there's parts that don't have a, a, a path within them. So we have to go back in and draw that path. You can come back in and change the color and adjust the paths. In the layers menu, you can toggle on and off viewing the uh, the layer, and you can see these areas that don't have a shape drawn. It's just showing white through. That's a good way to see if you've missed something. And so we go into these, and we actually need to redraw a path. So we go into the path tool, we click on all these nodes, draw a path, and then we can fill in the color. It's just in the drawing process, it's sometimes hard to tell if a path has been drawn there or not because it still has the outlines. But just because it has lines around doesn't mean you can fill it in with a color. It still needs to be its own object and its own path.
We'll select everything, and then we can go into the fill and stroke settings, and we're gonna go into the stroke paint and disable the stroke. That's gonna take off the black lines and leave a slight white, or a, a transparent that we can see back through to the back. It's just gonna make it look a little bit better. Um, you could choose to have a certain line too if you wanted to. A couple more areas that we just need to touch up, um, some areas that didn't get a path drawn in it, and then these ones we need to turn off the stroke as well after they've been drawn, because by default when you draw a path, it just has a, a default black stroke. So we'll fill this one in with the color, turn the stroke off. Next, we'll get the rectangle tool and we'll create our own background since we're not gonna be using the image in the final thing. So we draw a rectangle here and we can choose any color we want. Um, it's following the opacity of the last thing. So we'll turn the opacity all the way up. And then notice some of these shapes that we drew are in the wrong layer. Um, we drew them um, on accident in the, uh, I think on layer one. So we need to move that. We can right click and move it to layer two. And then it's still gonna be on the upper level so we can just lower it down to a lower to underneath the background, then we'll uh, lower the entire background. We can select the whole thing and go to object group. And then to give it a little bit more depth, we can create sort of a drop shadow behind. And to do that, we're just going to select uh, the group and go to right click duplicate. And then we'll turn the whole thing black, it's going to be over top right now. And we can go over into the stroke paint and turn up the blur. So we'll just blur this a little bit. We can lower it down one level and then continue to make adjustments if we need to. Well, that's the finished product, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed this tutorial. Go ahead and leave your questions and comments below if you have any. Uh, and we'll catch you in the next tutorial.